Hello and welcome to Pock and Rock. In today's video I am taking a look at albums that are as old as I am. I just turned 47 earlier this week so I was born in the year 1974 so all these albums were released in 1974. As ever I have used Pub Meeple to do my ranking. Link in the description below if you want to rank any of your own stuff. So let's dive straight in with number 15 and that is the third album by Queen sheer heart attack this is an album where side one is phenomenal so it starts off with brighton rock killer queen lily of the valley tenement funster um and concludes with now i'm here it's a really solid side of an album i don't like side two as much but there's still some decent stuff on it like stone cold crazy my number 15 queen sheer heart attack at number 14, Street Life Serenade by Billy Joel, his third album. This contains an absolute banging track in The Entertainer. It also contains the title track, Street Life Serenade, which, whilst the song is wonderful, I often think he sings it a little bit odd uh, with the, the length of the notes and the change of the notes in the word Street Life Serenade. It's also got some other great album tracks on here, like Root Beer Rag, but I particularly like The Great Suburban Showdown. Number 14, Street Life Serenade. At number 13, I have placed Sheet Music by 10CC, their second album. So this is an album that contains Wall Street Shuffle, Worst Band in the World, Silly Love, I mean, great hit tracks, but it also contains some intriguing stuff like the Sacroiliac, all about part of your back, which is such a strange thing. It demonstrates what an odd band 10cc could be at times. Sheet music, my number 13. At number 12, I have placed an album by Status Quo, and it is Quo. This is part of their run of fantastic rock albums, all the way through from Piledriver, probably through to Blue For You when they switched producer. This is right slap bang in the middle of that period. There's a massive hit single on here in Break The Rules. But it also contains Backwater, which I believe they still play live to this day. Often described as probably Quo's heaviest album. Quo is my number 12. At number 11, I have placed an album by Kraftwerk, and it is Autobahn. This is a touchstone of electronic music. The whole of side one being taken up by Autobahn, but then you've got Comet on Melody 1 and Comet on Melody 2. It's a seminal work, Autobahn. Even got a hit single from a much reduced down version of Autobahn. My number 11. And number 10 is a band that has been growing on me lately. I've been listening to a little bit more of it. I'm no means a prog fan, but at number 10, I have got. The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway by Genesis, and it was the final album featuring Peter Gabriel, who I'm really fond of. I love Peter Gabriel's work. It's taken me a while to get into this album, although the entry point is Carpet Crawl and the 1999 version Carpet Crawlers, when he kind of went back and did some re-recording with them. But I'm particularly fond of Peter Gabriel. This is probably the the, the pinnacle of his vision when it comes to music with Genesis and he decided to leave on a high. Lamb Lies Down on Broadway is my number 10. At number 9, John Denver and Back Home Again. So this is an album that my dad had. My dad was very fond of John Denver. We had it on cassette so I heard it in the car all the time. And Again, we're probably looking at the pinnacle of John Denver's career for me. Now, this contains Annie's Song, which was a number one hit single in 74. But it also contains stuff like Thank God I'm a Country Boy, uh, Back Home Again, the title track, On the Road, Grandma's Feather Bed, the original version of that, Eclipse, Sweet Surrender, and the beautiful song at the end, This Old Guitar. I know every note and word on this because it was part of my childhood growing up. Back Home Again by John Denver, and number nine. And number eight is Slade with Old, New, Borrowed and Blue. This is a really fine album. 
best known tracks towards the end are my friend Stan and Every Day. Every Day is an absolute wonderful ballad. And if you've not heard it, it's another one of those Slade are more than just Christmas. Admittedly, between those two singles, that's when they released Merry Christmas, Everybody, which needs no introduction. The first four tracks on this album, I think, kick off the album brilliantly and are up there with some of the best four track openers going. So we've got Just a Little Bit, When the Lights Go Out, My Town and Find Yourself a Rainbow. And the styles on this album don't half change a lot. This is not just a glam rock stomp record. It's better than that. Old, new, borrowed, blue, number eight. And number seven, I have placed John Lennon with Walls and Bridges. This is the album he recorded in his Lost Weekend period. For some, it's a bit of a return to him writing tunes, which people felt were missing off some time in New York City and Mind Games. Number one hit single in the US with Whatever Gets You Through the Night. Also had number nine Dream on it, which is a really, really good song. But there's more on it than that. So it kicks off with Going Down on Love, which is a really good track. There is also Nobody Loves You When You're Down and Out and Beef Jerky. And there's more on this album than you think. And it's taken me a very long time to like it. 30 years nearly since I first heard it. Now. It's an album I think I appreciate a lot more than I used to. I'm keeping an eye out for a vinyl copy of it. So, number seven, Wars and Bridges. Sneaking out of John Lennon at number six is his old bandmate, Ringo Starr. This is Goodnight Vienna, his second proper album, but his fourth release. Title track is written by Lennon, and actually I think is, as a song, better than anything on Walls and Bridges. But it's also got Snoo Carew, that's written by Elton John and Bernie Topin. There is a really good cover version of Roger Miller's Husbands and Wives. The No-No song, which actually makes it onto his Blast from the Past collection. His cover version of Only You. And it's a, a solid album. It's probably the last thing of any real consequence that Ringo released. It's not as good as his 1973 album Ringo but it's a worthy follow-up. And it was my favourite album released by a Beatle in the year 1974. Good night, Vienna. Into my top five. And at number five, I have got an album that won the Grammys in 75, Fulfilling This First Finale by Stevie Wonder. So this seems to be the album that is a little forgotten in his classic 70s run that goes from um, Music of My Mind, Talking Book, Inner Visions, then we have Fulfilling This First Finale and then kind of concludes with the double album Songs in the Key of Life. But this I think is probably my favourite Stevie Wonder album. So we've got Smile Please, then there is Heaven is a Zillion Light Years Away, and the album side one concludes with Boogie on Reggae Woman. And then on side two, I have one of my all-time favourite Stevie tracks, and that's They Won't Go When I Go. This was covered brilliantly by George Michael on his Listen Without Prejudice album. And it's the reason, perhaps, why I found it so easy to get into this album. Number five, Fulfillingness, first finale by Stevie Wonder. And number four making their second appearance on this list, Slade with In Flame. This was the soundtrack to their 1974 movie, Flame. Best known tracks will be Far, Far Away, which reached number two, and would have deserved to reach number one. And How Does It Feel, which only reached number 15, giving Slade their first non-top 10 single since 1971. But there's other great tracks on here from this soundtrack, including one of my favourite Slade tracks, Them Kind of Monkeys Can't Swing. If you've not heard Slade in Flame, check it out. It's my number four. At number three, making their second appearance in this list, is my favourite album by this band. It is Queen 2. This is an absolutely wonderful album. And it was a serious link in tension for my top 15 albums of the 1970s. 
So side one written by Brian May and Roger Taylor. And then side two entirely written by Freddie and sets the scene for what would be their modus operandi for the rest of their time, which is bombast, ridiculousness, overblown, operatic, Bohemian Rhapsody style. This is such a touchstone in their career. It was their first major hit. It contained their first top 10 single in the 70s of Rye. And they replicated this album cover for the video to Bohemian Rhapsody. An important album in Queen's history for sure. My number three from 1974 is Queen 2. At number two, I've played an album that's taken me a whole long time to even like, let alone appreciate. And now I think it is an absolute masterwork. Diamond Dogs by David Bowie. I think I didn't like it when I first heard it because it's such an unsettling album. It is loosely based around his attempts to write a stage version of Orwell's 1984, but he could not get the right to do that, so it didn't happen. But some of these tracks in here contain an absolute clear link back to 1984 so you have got big brother there is a track 1984 rebel rebel and there's obviously the opening track diamond dogs but it, it is it is an unsettling album it is kind of a post-apocalyptic setting but diamond dogs just gets better the more i listen to it i don't think it would ever sleep the number one spot but it would certainly consolidate its place here at number two diamond dogs my number two. And finally, at number one, is the only album to make my top 15 of the 1970s. This album is perfect. It is I Want to See the Bright Lights Tonight by Richard and Linda Thompson. From When I Get to the Border through to The Great Valerio, every track is absolutely fantastic. So we have When I Get to the Border, Calvary Cross, Withered and Died, which was my entry point thanks to the Elvis Costello cover version. The title track, which was the one that really turned me on to how good Richard Thompson actually is. Down Where the Drunkards Roll, We Sing Hallelujah, Has He Got a Friend For Me, The Little Beggar Girl, End of the Rainbow, and finishing with The Great Valerio. It is a perfect 10 track album and nothing should be changed on it. It's just so good. My number one, if you've never heard it, go out and listen to it. I want to see the bright lights tonight, Richard and Linda Thompson. So that was my top 15 of the year I was born, 1974. Thank you very much for watching. I'd love it if you subscribed, if you haven't already. And maybe go and get someone else subscribing as well. Tell other people about the channel. Remember to like the video. That means that it's more likely to come up on Google search. Hit the bell to receive the notifications of future content. I've also got six months back content that you might want to go and trawl your way through, including a top 15 from every decade, from the 50s all the way through to the 10s. But until the next video, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.